Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Vocast. I'm your host, Ethan Drew, and we've got yet another special guest with us today for another session of the podcast. We have Mr. Glenn Miller with us here today. Say hello to the audience there. Hello, everyone. For those that don't know Glenn, he is heavily involved in the choral music world and particularly the octavism side of choral music. And as you can tell, he's got a really low voice. <laughs> so, yes, I do. Very exciting individual, very low voice, very talented voice, and we're excited to have him with us today. If you guys are ready to learn more about him, his involvement with music, his musical journey, make sure you drop a like, throw a subscription. It helps us keep these podcasts coming your way. And uh, yeah, Glenn, you ready to get uh, hammered with questions? I'm ready. Here we go. All right. So we're starting off really light here, and I'm going to step out of frame for a second to grab my drink but what is your favorite or preferred beverage or drink oh everybody laughs at this i'm a farm boy i grew up on a farm a dairy farm so i love milk (laughs) yeah people laugh at that but i love milk i used to like whole but it's too it's too rich and i've kind of worked my way down but yeah i'm a a boy I have to relate with you. I have a healthy obsession with whole milk and just yeah. whole, or milk in general. Oh, I love it. It's, it's, it's one of those things where you just, you're guilty of, um, you're just guilty of liking it. You know, growing up on the farm, you know, we had, you know, raw milk yeah, and ice cold. Oh, so let me ask you. So, have you actually had fresh milk from the from from the cows on the farm? Oh yeah, oh, is, absolutely. Does it live up to the hype? Is it better than store milk? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. You know, um, when I go off and um, sing for Benedict Sheehan up in northeastern Pennsylvania, they're right next to a dairy farm. Yeah, and it's heaven. Hmm. You know, they get milk right from the, the farm and it's, yeah, it's the best. So, oh man, that makes know. me want to give it a try now. It is. Yeah. It has I, to be ice cold. It's yeah. Oh, ice cold. Yeah. Yes. I used to do this funny thing whenever I would drink milk, I would take the milk and I would put it in the freezer. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I would drink it after it had just barely started to freeze. Mm-hmm. The glass is cold. It's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is my current uh, drinking pleasure. It is a Boylan Bottling Co. Ginger Ale. Focus. Oh, okay. It, yeah, there we go. Come on, camera, focus. Focus. Uh, it's not wanting to. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Boylan Bottling Co. Ginger Ale. Okay. That is my recent guilty pleasure. And, and, where, um, and where's that from? So it looks like... All right, so let's see. So they bottle it in New York. Oh, okay. But they sell this at my local um, food line. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it's more of like a southeastern store. But oh, okay. this stuff is like, oh, it's my favorite. I have a, to, to show how big of a guilty pleasure this truly is for me, I have a mason jar full of bottle caps. Uh, that's funny. That's my first one. And that, that does not include the amount of bottle caps I have thrown away i have probably two more mason jars of bottle caps that i've thrown away from drinking all these i think you're you're, you're hooked there you go <laughs> very very easily hooked you know, well, I'm, I'm in detroit you know and verner's is the thing here you know yes i was reading about verner's and i haven't tried it yet they don't have it around here yeah it's pretty pretty localized it's a it's a big thing here really big you know 100 okay. percent yeah um by the way, if there's anyone that works for Boylan Bottling Co. that watches my channel, I'm looking for a sponsorship. I'm a loyal customer, as you can see. Oh, <laughs> get the plug in. That's great. Anyway. Anyway. All right. Moving on to our second question of the day. So this one's kind of a broad question, so answer it how you see fit and however much time you feel like you have. But what or who got you into music? Oh, I knew all along. I remember when I was five or six years old and we got a piano and 
and if I was home sick that day and um, from school and the piano arrived and um, I got off the sofa where I was supposed to be and went over to the piano and just found middle C on my own. And then I <laughs> found a C major chord, C, E, G, you know, middle C. And then I found yeah. it in the left hand and I started going back and forth like this. And I was like, oh, this is great, you know? Really? So oh. pi- so you started with piano? Oh, yeah. I'm a, I, I, yeah, I had piano and I'm also an organist. That's my, what my undergrad degree is in. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I, that was it. And I just, I just knew. Doesn't everybody know when they're six, seven years old what they're going to do? <laughs> that's not, that's not usual, especially no, not, not at that age. You know, I didn't understand why people didn't understand that. But, um, <laughs> and then, you know, I, we were active in our church. Um, I couldn't wait to get into the choir. You had to be eight years old, little country church. I just loved it. And, oh, absolutely. And just, it was it. I just, I just knew. And it all. That's, that's not a usual thing. Not everybody usually knows. Sometimes I've run into several people, like several friends I've made here in the music industry where they have gotten into music and never once suspected that the talent was there or they never saw it coming. Right. Ever. So this is like a stark contrast. You're the first person, at least that I've interviewed that's oh, ever really? had like, known for a fact since a young age that they were born to be in music yeah i just i just knew and um sang all the way through eighth grade and then my voice changed and sang and, and took started taking piano. i had to wait to start to take piano because um my brother the piano was for my brother and so i had to wait a year and i was like please hurry up you know <laughs> and, um, and then it started and then followed all the way through high school started taking organ when i was a uh, ninth you know ninth grade and then yeah. went on to Westminster Choir College and did a, a an organ church music degree wow that's and impressive that, yeah and I you know really as a I, I, I really was I really wasn't interested in a singing career per se um because uh, I, I my voice was so low the repertoire mm-hmm. the solo repertoire you know that I wasn't interested in opera. Well, besides, my voice is really too low because um, right. all the roles are higher, and um, and so I was happy doing that in my church job. That's what I, and that's what I've done all my career. I've been a professional church musician, director. I, mean, I also yeah. got a degree in conducting. I master's wow. in conducting, so choral conducting. So had a big career doing all that. Definitely, yeah. You know, girls' choirs, boys' choir, professional choir. You know, I've right. done. Yeah. yeah. So, but then as the, as the, as the singing evolved in my thirties, I, you know, started doing gigs. It's been, um, you know, I, I never felt like I wanted to go to New York and just gig all the time, you know, live off, live that life. Right. Uh, I like having a steady income, you know, and I, and I like, I like playing the organ and I like directing. So it was a good, um, good, um, side, sideline. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I didn't have Absolutely. To I didn't have to depend on it. So, yeah, definitely. And you've seemed to have easily struck a nerve with your uh, with your choral world, though. That's become your yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. It really is kind of funny. I just kind of laugh. Um, <laughs> you know, but it's it's um, there are just so very very few octavists out there. It's so I I don't know really much of anything about octavism in any way, shape, or form. So whenever I saw an opportunity to get you on here, uh, that was something that I was really excited to hear about. Was to kind of understand what it is from someone yeah. who actually does it. Well, I so, I didn't know the term octavist or octavism until I was out doing a rock off vespers in Salt Lake City, maybe. Oh, 10 years ago. And they were billing me as an octavist. And I was like, well, what's that? <laughs> I think what it really, you know, it comes out of the, the, the Orthodox tradition, the choral music tradition. Yes. Uh, and, and it really, I, I guess, simply put is that we just sing notes an octave lower than the nor- normal bass, you know, the normal bass line. We just sing an octave lower and huh, okay. below below the bass staff you know frequently um, most of the time so that's kind okay. of and in that tradition you know um, all the music is unaccompanied 
no okay. instruments are allowed um no organs the pianos in the worship um and that's what that's where all this the that repertoire um is that's what it comes from and um so mm -hmm. in that kind of acoustic um you need you need a good solid bass right to kind of support the to support the the, 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 the sound of the total choir yeah and it, and it resonates in the space you know it's pretty magical and um and then it's a color thing too um it's kind of a rich sound it's a deep sound but it's a vibrant sound and um i my own voice um as you can tell from my speaking it's got a lot of edge to it um perhaps it does and very um, very resonant a lot of higher partials yeah yeah exactly so i um I, it, so that that um is that kind of contributes a lot to the the, the, what's going on above us and the other voice parts because um in terms of tuning um i'm generating a lot of upper partials and that um and and the upper voices kind of lock in to their into that you know yeah. so, and so that's how that all works um that's I, incredible yeah and you could i can hear on a, on a lot of a lot of a lot of recordings i've done or like when i'm, when I'm doing a some of the some, some of the solo things you can you can distinguish the different upper partials like the octave and the fifth and the right the third above that you can really hear it and i can um and i use that as uh, when i'm singing um solos or even in, in choral work um as a gauge if i'm i'm singing in tune um you know, so because I, I, when it gets super low, it gets hard to tell like what the fundamental is. At least, I, I, maybe I'm going deaf. <laughs> you know, but um, I, if I can hear what's going on above it, I know I'm I'm locked in. You know, and um, and also in terms of the different vowels, you know how um, certain more closed vowels um, generate a little more pronounced. You know, right. You know, format um, in, the, in the partials and everything. Um, you know, my voice is, it's, it's, it's very resonant. And, and so that, and, and I also, um, when I sing chorally and, and well, um, um, just keeping a, a, a steady tone, um, I, I, oftentimes you hear kind of the vibrato gets a little crazy with some singers mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it's kind of like, you're trying to tune to a bowl of jello, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. But, you know, and so I think that's, that's also, um, um, my ability to be, to sing with a real steady tone and a musical tone, um, without kind of gunning it all the time. Mm -hmm. Cause that really has, um, um, uh, uh, been you know, people conductors like that and choirs like that and right, yeah. um, and it's really kind of helped help my career <laughs> with oh, I'm, so, I'm sure you know, you know i recently a year ago i um did a, had an engagement in the holy land and it was an international men's choir and we had singers from um, all over. We had, you know, there were eight octavists in the group. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty scary. <laughs> and, um, but, um, but it was pretty amazing because um, um, in the, you know, we had singers from um, Moscow. Oh, wow. Group and, 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 um, and it's a, you know, I feel like a, you know, kind of adolescent compared to that <laughs> color because it's just such a big, uh, 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 uh. It's very, <laughs> very cavernous, right? It's very cavernous. And I mean, it's, and it, and it, and it, and the uh, music, um, um, the, the, the compositions, um, are, um, are, you know, are, are, are composed because of this, you know, and right. like the Rachmaninoff Vespers, you know, I do, I've done it, oh my gosh, tons of times here in America. And I mean, there's an American, you know, every country has a sound, you know, there's an American sound, there's a British sound, you know, um, there's a Russian sound, there's a German, you know, a, and um, a color. And I'm um, having done it with a, 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 you know, Orthodox, true Orthodox singers. Um, right. Um, you know, it's meat and potatoes. 
it's yeah. really, you know, it's um yeah or whatever and, and a lot of vodka <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah 100 you know, percent. they do consume the vodka let me tell you <laughs> that's partially i bet one of the reasons why they have such cavernous voices yes uh, there's a little more um texture to their cords <laughs> <laughs> then uh, you know i'm very um I, i'm i'm very um i don't drink i don't smoke don't do any of that you know right and um and that does color the voice um I, you know it really does and um and i figured i don't well, i don't i, I live very healthily and um and i don't absolutely and i don't want to do anything that's going to compromise um um anything and i'm also i think it's contributed significantly uh my being so diligent about that to my longevity yeah because i've been doing this for a long time and um and um i listen to singers that i've you know um went to school with and everything and you know um yeah this, that's that so in a in a in a nutshell folks Octavism is typically whenever they sing an octave lower. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. It was actually way simpler than I anticipated it being. Yeah. It sounds complicated. It's not. You know, there's a wonderful book by um, a, a composer and a director named um, Chesnikov. He was that he was the one that wrote the big. Um, Chesnikov. Okay. Do not reject me in my re reject me in my old age. I've always I'm terrible with languages. Really. And he wrote a and he was he was a, the conductor of the the choir um, at the early at late the late nineteenth century early twentieth century um, the the Russian Moscow Synodical School which was okay. the big church music organization their training school okay and that's 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 the choir that the Rachmaninoff Vespers was composed for and um, also all that music and he wrote a wonderful book about choir training and how do you prize a choir and you know in terms of how many have in each section and it's all for this repertoire and um, it talks about how many and how many octavists you need and i forget the number but how that is really kind of like the um the icing on the cake you don't yeah you don't have them do their thing all the time um because when you do that you know you kind of doesn't make it a big event you know sometimes when i go out and do the the vespers um conductors will add like extra low notes you know and right. um, and i get it you know and depends on the situation but also it's um um it's a bit indulgent i think and if rachmaninoff wanted it he would have written it in the score and right. also it takes away from that magic moment in the fifth movement with the b flat you know you don't need to kind of go below that before <laughs> with another movement before we get to it you know it's kind of like the big you know it kind takes, of the big bang right yeah, yeah exactly it diminishes the impact so um but um i don't know where we were kind of, so the octavist thing yeah um yeah. And the color and um absolutely and um, and also you know the high our high my high range um and also you know uh the normally the, the upper range of an octavist it's a it's a more intense color because our passaggios are so low in that, you know, when you get into the passaggio area, that's where your ping notes are. And, you know, the one that the really, the climatic notes and for right. normal repertoire, particularly in opera oratorio, um, you know, the, their, the normal range of those, of those works is in the, uh, the uh, it's all higher, but it's, and then it gets higher. And the, the exciting moment, the climaxes are way up there. But mm -hmm. our our exciting moments happen before that, so you don't want to climax too soon, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I can, for, in a way, um, and um, and I, I, you know, back in the '90s, I was doing a, I did a lot of solo work, um, and um, with, I did symphonic rep, um, big choral rep, like um, I did. I I actually did a Verdi Requiem. I don't know why. It was, that's a bass baritone thing. I thought I was going <laughs> to die. You know, <laughs> because sustaining it, it stays up there all the time. And right. supporting that is, um, you know, it's just so demanding. And, right. uh, and you know, Beethoven needs to solemnis and those big, those big things. And I'm grateful, but, I, you know, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wasn't meant to do that, I, you know. And, and as, you, sense. As, you mature, as you know, as you get on with the years too, you know. Yeah. So it's fine. So that's yeah. fine.
that, well, that's activism for you. Uh, yeah, in a bit of a nutshell, right? Yeah, and I'll tell you, it's kind of, um, how can I say? It's a, uh, it's kind of funny because I get, I, I hear from people quite frequently, especially young singers, you know, and it's, and I make, maybe it's kind of like the, uh, the opposite extreme is like a soprano just wanting to get more high notes, you know, <laughs> you know, and I get these like from a young singer, oh, how do I get more low notes? You know, well, I, well, I say two things. Well, first of all, I listen to their speaking voice and I'm like, uh, probably not in the cards. You probably don't have the same same depth. And secondly, um, um, if you did, it just comes in time. And mm -hmm. um, a lot of a lot of normal bases because it's kind of a you know it's a I guess it's a guy thing. I don't know. <laughs> you know, so. you know, and um, I kind of I kind of but I, I I try to give it you know um um some seasoned um words about you know n never push your voice don't push it I, and i'm and i'm glad i didn't push all yeah. through these first decades because that's if you push a muscle too hard it's gonna go flabby exactly yeah and then it's... you're gonna get a wobble and mm -hmm. then you're toast you know yep. and that's just not that's <laughs> and then and there you are so you pushing know, too hard is a good way to get injured Exactly. You can, you can, you can do damage and you know, you see it in the opera world. Um, you know, a really great young singer coming along and they're pushed. And, and, and I, I don't want to you know, um, say negative, speak negatively, but it's the temptation is to do, um, to, to push it too hard too soon. Right. And, and, um, um, and you know, there's lots of, you know, examples of that out there, you know, you don't sing yep. Wagner until you're in your forties, <laughs> at least, you know, don't try right. to do it when you're 28, you know, <laughs> right. um, uh, you know, if you want to be doing it when you're, you know, 50 or 60 and, um, all due respect. And, um, right. So, yeah. so that's octavism folks. There you go. So uh, this will lead into our next question. So um, who were some of the most influential figures both in your life as well as your musical career? Um, this can be anybody. Yeah. Um, well, there have been a lot, a number of people in different ways. Um, I look back to my... Um, my f first piano teacher, you know, I just thought it was, she, she opened up a world to me. Yeah. She wasn't the greatest teacher, you know, she didn't know fingers had numbers, but I, <laughs> you know, well, she didn't. <laughs> it's kind of funny, you know, and I had her for a year, you know, then she decided yeah. to take up sonography, but she opened the door. Absolutely. Uh, and That's the biggest part. Yeah. Like opening you the door. Know, and, and then, you know, moving on and, my high school, my high school choir director, you know, um, just kind of opening doors and my high school organ teacher who got me pointed in the direction of the, the Westminster Choir College. Right. Um, and then <laughs> going to the choir college, you know, what an experience that was, you know, in the 70s, it was at such a peak, you know, everybody sang every day. We, um, you know, we we performed with the New York Philharmonic. You know. Oh wow. Yeah, we were the kind That's of cool. go yeah. You know, with Leonard Bernstein. You know, we sang under Leonard Bernstein. That's and crazy. recorded under him. It's crazy. You know, and we're going like, oh, we got to go to New York, and you know, yeah, yeah, get over it. You know, <laughs> think about it. You know, it was yeah. it was the week before Christmas, and we had this gig, and we all had church jobs, and we were on doing finals, and we had a gig with the Philharmonic, and. We were recording, I think, and, uh, you know, we got to get on the bus, you know? Yeah. Yeah, really, come on. You know, where else can, and, and so just to be exposed to that and, and, and to sing, you know, and just the soloist, you know, it wasn't with, um, with, with, who was the one? We did a lot of Berlioz then, um, back then, and I can't, I think it was, who was conducting? What was it? Pierre Boulez? I think Pierre Boulez was conducting another legend you know and um and jesse norman was the soloist you know I, <laughs> you know and it's like this wow and th that level and that all that experience but also other professors at the choir college there's a 
there was a, a woman, um, she was a, a, a voice professor, but she also taught children's choirs. Her husband was the head of the church music department, you know, okay. and were just legendary, you know, and they just formed yeah. us. And, and um, Helen Kemp was her name. And just... Okay. But Helen Kemp, um, she was she was a great singer in her in her own in her own right in her day, but she also was the she was the 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 person that was the authority on children's choirs, and really? she yeah. taught related vocal methods and children's choirs and on and on and on. But it was more than just the the, the musical end. It was about the life end and the ministry end and the people end, and that that was really the 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 what really um, was made the choir college so special for church music majors. We were there. It wasn't a performance place. Yeah. It, we were there to, to become teachers and mentors and, you know, and, and minister. And right. uh, she exemplified that and her, and her husband too, you know, and they, mm -hmm. they supported me um, through my career. Um, um, they looked after us after we would graduate, go out and do our first jobs, you know, um, and then it would be time for us to go to graduate school and they would kind of guide us along and, and they, they, they were, they'd be kind of, they came, they'd be like my adopted parents, you know, but other professors at the choir college too, you know, my, my two, my, the two voice teachers I had, um, Bob Simpson, who was this big bear, you know, just, just, just taught, taught us more than just tech singing technique, you know, they taught They're us. They're really the reasons that get the, that you're in music in the first place then. Totally. Totally. And, and what, what it is about, you know, what it, what it you know, what it is that we're called to do as people, um, nurturing young people, you know, right. getting caught up, you know, and I've, you know, I've done so many high level performance choral things and that's great. And, and, um, but, um, it's just it's, it's and it and, and, and choral music just has it's, it's such an amazing world and it changes lives and all of that and um, absolutely and there's a great video that's going to be a documentary coming out sometime in the next couple of years about choral singing in america and i um, mean it goes through all of this and all these greats are speaking and not just professional choirs but community choirs and on and on and i got to speak in it a little bit and um but just how it's um um it changes people's lives you know community and just um sustaining you know people through whatever and um so um that's that's been the kind of the thread that's you know and and you know working i was going on about singing at a high level professionally you know where you know you, you are you know, if you, with a group like Conspirari or Clarion in New York or any of those groups. Um, and yeah, the bar is all the way up here, you know, and everything is perfect. Yeah. But then also when I work with kids, um, you know, and these are just kids, normal kids uh, or adults, you know, and, you know, that's changing their lives too. And they might not get all the S's in the right spot or the tone might not be it, but uh, there's a, there's something far greater than all of that, 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 that happens. And so that's right. Yeah, absolutely. That, you know, so, oh, well, I'm, I'm kind of babbling here, <laughs> you know, but people, people that were influential. Yeah. And yeah. of course, Mr. Shaw, Robert Shaw, Shaw sure. you know, he changed our ears. Um, you'd go and, um, and he could, his discipline, his complete um, dedication to bringing to life what the composer put down on the page without getting your personality in the way. Uh, that's you go at the door, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. And that's, 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 that's something I look for in a, in a conductor, um, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a professional situation, you know, you know, Craig Hella Johnson with Conspirare, Conspirare has that same sense of, um, servanthood, as um, Stephen Fox does with Clarion in New York, and I could certainly name others, um, but um, that um, that total um, commitment to uh, music, that being the music, but also music um, being a, a beacon a in the community, like Shaw was big on that, right? You know, people together. Um, it's just, you know kind of keeps you in check, you know, and so, 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 
and um, and then John Scott, um, who was at St. Paul's in London, I sang for him there. And then he moved to New York and sang for him there. But just the musicianship level, um, so inspiring and so um, uh, challenging at the same time to, for us to do to really to to, to 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 give it our best, you know. So it's been a great ride. You know, I, I, hope, I hope with my work that I do the same, you know, my own little world. You yeah, know. definitely. Yeah. You know, you've got, you've got plenty of people in my audience that, that have listened to your work before and I know they look up to you for sure. Yeah. Well, I kind of feel like I, it's always, I'm feeling like I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> I've got all these people that kind of like, Oh, you get all these likes for these things, you know, and, and, and the, the, the interviews that I've done recently, um, you know, and the stuff that where that, um, uh, generates and you know it's it's yeah. when i go off on a gig um particularly with the vespers you know and and i'm singing with young singers you know they're in their 20s and 30s and all that and they speak about how that robert shaw Rachmaninoff vesper recording just changed their lives and compelled them to to go into it and then i find out they were born in 1995 <laughs> and i'm like Oh my God, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and it's just, I just kind of, I kind of like, you know, do not reject me in my old age, said Chef Sakon, but that's, um, <laughs> you know, and I kind of think that's kind of, that was kind of prophetic, you know, um, but yeah. also, um, um, I think too, how across those, the, the span of the, the decades of my career, how pieces have entered into my life at the, at the right time or opportunities to sing various paces um and particularly the chesnikov um concerto um which conspire recorded you know and got the grammy and um how um that came that that came at the right time um getting being given that piece by um vlad morrison i was out doing a rock vespers up i forget where it was and he said, oh, I've got this piece for you. You've got to do it, you know. And he's Vlad Morrison is the um, editor and of, of Musica Rusica, which is the big publishing company uh, in, here in the state for all of this repertoire. And yeah. he's scholarly, and, you know, he's, you know, he's written books and on and on and on. He's, he is the guy. And um, so, but to have that kind of enter my life when it did, and, you know, it was all, there's a plan. I look back and I see how, one thing led to another, to another, to another, and um, there's a and plan. then you're here, right? Yeah, and here we are making this thing. <laughs> Actually, in, in the you can see the um, in the, behind me, um, there's a frame with a white piece of paper in the middle of it. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, that's the Grammy thing. I didn't get a statue. Um, oh. I know because it was I was just a soloist, and um, and and only and Craig got the statue, and and so that was that. So, but I'm you know that was that was kind of a um, uh, quite an experience, I will say, going to the Grammys because I was there. I and, can only imagine. Yeah, there's a there's some pictures on YouTube. It's, I don't know. There's it's out there somewhere, and that was yeah, that was kind of interesting. I uh, believe it, hundred percent. The like, there's a lot of different cultures coming colliding there. It's pretty incredible. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, that was pretty special. But yeah, for sure. Um, Let's see. Um, so with those influential figures in mind that we had just recently discussed, uh, what is what is one line that one of them has said to you that has stuck with you your entire life journey? Um, um, let me think. Something profound that sticks out to you, like, I'm never going to forget that. Mm, it's not about you. Mm. Short, not, sweet, and to the point. It's not about you. And with Mr. Shaw, there was a thing. The beginning of the note is not the loudest part of the note. Mm -hmm. um, and how, yeah. It's That's not a bit of a uh, controversial opinion by some. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, and um, it, it's not about you. It's about, it's, it's about something far greater. And that we are stewards of what we've been given absolutely you know and we all stand on the shoulders of giants that was what helen kemp won oh yes that's a yeah we're on the shoulders of giants and that i think of 
my first piano teacher, you know, she was just this little church and this organist at the little country, our little country church. She wasn't anything, anyone grand and glorious, you know, and, but it was because of her that, you know, her shoulders, I stand on. Right. And I think of people that, I'm not my professors, but also how, um, the, all the likes and inquiries and just even like, like you're reaching out to do this podcast and, and Peter and all that, you know, um, you know, who knows where the, 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 the ripple in that, from the pebble that I drop in the pond goes. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, um, and I know that, um, you know, none of us is here forever. Right. And, um, and just hope that what we do kind of sticks around, I guess. Sticks around and, you know, brings to life something that, that we, that we inherited. And, um, so that's kind of, those are the things that I'm always aware of and just the diligence in, um, preparation and just, being professional and all that type of thing, but just, but also that each person's important. Each person is a gift. And that's one thing that I've always tried to be aware of when I get a kid that can't find that pitch, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, but they're there for a reason and, and you, you never know when the light bulb's going to go on in them. And then when it does, or, you know, you're changing their life, you're giving them, you're giving, you're passing a light to them. And, right. And they're going to pass it to somebody else in some way, shape or form. And um, so mm -hmm. we're stewards, we're only here for a while. And it's not about you. It's not about you. And it's about something far greater than ourselves and something far more mystical than about ourselves. And all this music comes from a, a you know, God. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. So if you ever uh, need some musical motivation or anything like that, folks, take what you just heard and run with it. Yes. Let's see. Moving on to a, another question here. So this one is a little bit obvious since you kind of br briefly mentioned it earlier, but do you play any instruments? And, and if so, what are they? So you mentioned organ and piano. Yep. Yeah, I'm an organist. I play, well, you start piano. I always wanted to play the organ. Um, I knew that when I was seven. I just thought it was the best thing. Yeah. Uh, pipe organ. I don't like electronic organs. Fair, fair. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's a manufactured sound. There's no wind in it. There's no life in it. There's right, yeah. interaction with them, um, the, 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 with wind and metal or wood, you know, with molecules that, right. that are affected by, environment and all that type of thing um yeah and i love playing the organ uh you know i'm, I'm not a, uh, I'm, I'm a good organist i'm not going to be on the on, a, on a, some management roster um <laughs> but uh, but i didn't have that calling but um i love playing i love playing church uh, a traditional church i love playing a hymn uh, yeah. you know it's it's great so that, that that's those are the that, that's what I, that's my instrument yeah. Your primary is your organ, but you'd have played piano before as well. Oh yeah. You need piano background before you can get yeah. to it. And it, it kind of makes sense too, because oh, yeah. organ is a, it's a piano based instrument, I guess. Yeah. It's a keyboard. You know. it, yeah. And then you got to be able to reach the pedals. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. You know, Definitely. And, you know, so. It's not for really short people. Um, the, you can lower the bench, but you unless know. You, uh, unless you can lower the bench. Yes, you can. You can. And, okay. um, and um, you know, you, you really, you're not going to be playing the organ when you're eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's... So, so, but yeah. But, but yeah, organ and piano, folks. Yes, there you go. So, um, what I are always I... wanted to, when I, I went to a very small country school and I, we had some instrument options when you're like in fourth grade, um, they, somebody would come in and you had a choice of trumpet, trombone, clarinet saxophone flute or accordion okay and i was like i really wanted to do oboe or cello <laughs> and i you know i i, I just love the cello and i love the oboe uh, i just think there's something so soulful about both of those instruments and um and and also that's um 
So I took trumpet for a year. Gave me a headache. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it. Um, and and um, but the 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 cello. Uh, Mr. Shaw always talked about. Um, um, you know, in as, for, as, as singers, um, caressing the sound like a cellist, cellist would, you know, you never, you know, just, you never whack, you, you never know. whack, you, you caress. And, um, and, um, you know, I love, I love listening to cello music and, and oboe music too, you know, and, um, so, but we didn't have that out in the, out in the, out in the country where we had it. Yeah. At the school. So, but, you know, it wasn't meant to be. And there we are. <laughs> but yeah, you found your call on the course. I found it, you know. So, um, what are three different things that people may not know about you? These can be off the wall. These can be music related. Can you name three things that uh, people may not know about you? Well, one, that I'm a farm boy. <laughs> you know, and I know how to bale hay and I know how to do all that stuff. I'm, and, I, you know, I know how to drive a tractor haven't done that in a long time because you know, the farm left us you know dad retired and sold mm -hmm. the farm I, and i wasn't the farmer my sister was but i um the older i get the more i value that upbringing because we learned the value of work yeah and the discipline of work and so that's one thing i'm a very um quiet person I kind of publicly I'm kind of be very extroverted but I'm a very much um you know I'm I'm I I'm here in my, in my house very quiet you know I've never felt called to marriage never felt called to have kids I just can't imagine I, I, I would see the kids on Wednesdays and Sundays for rehearsals you know mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I loved it I loved it but I that's a that's a calling that is a, that, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a that's a calling I'm very um um kind of a mystic kind of you know um I could be a monk in some ways, you know, that's, kind of, <laughs> you know, I just, that just, I just hear that. I just, that mystical side of church and faith and all that kind of, just something that I feel it. Um, let me think. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's two. I'm just trying to think. I don't know. Um, yeah. I just like, I like my, my um quiet space particularly in my house which is really kind of nice in my garden that type of thing yeah uh, and um and i get like I, yeah i get tired easily um when um, i'm out in the world um you know traveling exhausts me Oof. oh That's yeah the thing. i you know and it, it's it's just get it's 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 just exhausting. Um, you know, I'm, the older I get, the less I want to stay home, <laughs> the more I want to stay home and the less I want to get sandwiched in a, like a sardine, you know? Yeah. Well, I feel like a lot of people to play or downplay how much traveling can actually exhaust you anyway. And it's gotten harder, you know, it really has. And, um, and, um, just, yeah. And time zones I, this past year, I was out, you know, I, I'm, I, I live outside of Detroit, been here for 25 years, but this past year I was artist in residence out in Portland, Oregon at, at the Episcopal Cathedral, mm -hmm. which was fine. Um, but I'll tell you, it's a long way away. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and all my work was, um, it's been on the, it's on the east part of the United States and, and yeah. you know, that, that, that's just a long plane ride, you know, and oh, yeah. connections and you know, um, that was, that was just a lot. And I was, it was a short term thing. And I was, you know, I drove out there and I drove back and that was a lot. But I'm glad I saw the country. That yeah. was amazing. You know, I going out there, I had a limited time window to get there. So I, I had to do it in four days. Oh, wow. Was, yeah. That was rough. No, Not don't that. unadvisable. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, and, and, and I took two weeks coming back, you know, you know, oh yeah you might be able to enjoy it then i did and i visited friends and stuff like that you know but um absolutely uh, and um but i was glad when the driving was done <laughs> i got some driving to do next week for for an engagement in new york state you know which okay not, it'll be fine we'll get there yeah definitely you know but 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 that gets old so, oh i can only imagine you know and um so there we are 
Yeah, like, for sure. Um, so, um, what are some things? things? They only gave you two things. Oh, I don't know. That's kind of it. <laughs> no, you're fine. No, I get it. Yeah. Really, I do. Uh, that the traveling it it's even even when you're young, it's still exhausting. Oh yeah. And particularly when you're going across time zones, when I would go to England or yes. I had a, back in November, I started this, my art, my residency November 1st, but I had gigs on the calendar that I had to honor that I, you know, and one was like, I was there a week, had to fly to the East coast for another week, right a, a week later. And then I had to go to Germany for a gig the week after that, and then I had to fly all the way back to Portland from Germany. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I was, I was I was running on fumes, let me tell you. <laughs> it was, I can only imagine. Yeah, you know, that was a lot, you know. But it was a good gig. I'm glad I did it. It was a piece by a Finnish composer for Octave, you know, Octavist, you know. So, yeah. It, and uh, that, so that was that. So Absolutely. So, um, what are, what are some things that you like to do in your off time when you're not singing, performing, et cetera? I like, um, I like my garden. I missed that this year. And it's not, it's not a vegetable garden. It's just my flower garden. Um, flower garden. Okay. Yeah. I like to, I like that. Um, I like to, I'm not a fancy cook, but I'd like to make real food. That's nice. Um, oh, yeah. you know, I like to, um, that's I just like to enjoy my house. You know, I don't do a lot. Um, I, I'm not, I, 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 my, the time off, I just need for decompression time. And, um, where I don't have to be on, you know, I like going to, um, I like, what, um, I like to see in beautiful nature. You know, I, I, that's one thing I really enjoyed about being out in Portland in the spring because um, the gardens there, that's just amazing. And, and the scenery, the mountains, oh my gosh, it's incredible. I've heard the mountains out there are otherworldly. Really incredible, yeah. You know, there, you know, there's snow on some of them all year, you know. And I didn't quite do that, but um, it's just, oh, excuse me. Mm. Driving through the Rockies on the way, that was pretty incredible, you know. Uh, it's, that's something I've always wanted to do. Yeah, it's, I wish I, you know, you know, there was there was limits to how much I could do, but um, but just being outside, I don't. Um, cities exhaust me. Yeah, me too. You know, um, when I do a New York gig, which is fine, you know, it's all great, but um, when it just doesn't um, ever sleep, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's the city that never sleeps. Yeah, that's for sure. And I'm um, great, great, you know, great experiences and. Excuse me here. I, yeah, I like going to quiet places. You know, I like going to monasteries mm -hmm. because of the, the vibe and kind of the separation from outside of the crazy world. You know, I think the world is too frantic as it is. Yeah. You know, and too, you know, you know materialistic. And it has, everything has to happen yesterday. Oh, isn't that the truth? You know, and we got to, and you got to respond to my text now, you know? Yeah, exactly. All that, you know, yeah, and, um, mm -hmm. um, so, so that's kind of, that's kind of what I do. And, um, yeah, I got you. you know, hey, there I, ain't nothing wrong with a quiet lifestyle. No. And I like listening. I like hearing my clock tick, you know, even though it's, it's peaceful, a, it's bit, bit rhythmic right now. I've got a, it's got kind of drives me nuts a little bit. Cause tick, 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 tick. Like <laughs> a little irritating, but but that's that. You know. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So, um, moving on to a little bit more music related stuff. Uh -huh. um, so, how often do you practice singing throughout the week? So you've got your you've got your kind of music schedule and singing schedule. So, how often do you typically practice? Um, or it it varies. Like there are days I go by that I don't sing. <laughs> Um, and then there are days when I got to get working. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I'm a, uh, um, um, I probably should practice more than I do. 
you know, in, in vocalizing. Um, it kind of comes comes and goes. Um, uh, when I've got, I'm a good reader. I, you know, I can, I'm a quick read. I've got a quick ear. I, you know, I don't have to do a lot to prep in most cases. And I've got like years of experience. So I've done, I've done so much rep, you know, not just the Orthodox stuff, but just right. this stuff. Um, and um, so it, it varies. It, it varies. Like I haven't been singing much at all in recent weeks. Just I moved back and I had to get the house in order and lots of lots of other stuff. And um, I'm still kind of... Um, re-entering and kind of finding my groove it's exhausting when you when you you know when you travel and you move and you got to get 10 things you know so so absolutely yeah so so there we are yeah so do you happen to have like whenever you are doing your practicing do you happen to have like a rough like time amount of time you usually spend when you do practice um it depends on what i'm working on um it um Vocally, it's um, excuse me, just kind of, kind of getting the barnacles off the hull of the ship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You no, know, in terms of vocalization, um, and um, like I, next week I've got this engagement in New York State, and um, and it's a lot of um, a lot of music I don't know. Um, it's all Orthodox liturgical stuff. And it's all in Cyrillic, and so I've got. A, I've been spending some time, not singing it, but just speaking it, just to kind of get the get yourself like, prepared for it. Right? Yeah, yeah, and it's 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 a it's a it's it's a bit of a challenge. Of, oh, excuse me, nothing personal. Mm. Oh, no worries. Oh, no. Nice. And um, so um, yeah, so I've got that, that, that I've got that on, on the books, and I've got some things coming up. So. But uh, I find if I if I um, work it too hard, it it it, it kind of will. And, and as as I get older too, I find if I work the voice too hard, I lose I lose things. <laughs> you yeah. know, I lose top, you know, or it, it's kind of walking a tightrope a little bit, and I just kind of need to kind of see what's going on. Yeah, I see. I see. Yeah, you know, and I mean, there's good days and there are bad days. You know, there's. You know, like, like you can feel something in your in here. You know, it's like, oh, what's going on? You know, yeah, that's not normal. <laughs> no, no, you know, and um, so I've also, you know, you know, across the across time, you know, just how my voice has changed um, in the channel. Um, now I haven't when I had that German thing oh, back in November. You know, there was one spot I had to sing a low E flat. And then I had this big slide up with all this finished text up to a top E. And I hadn't done that work in about wow. 15 years. And it was, I that, back when I did it that first time, I just couldn't get it in. It, it was hard. It was just, there was there were issues with just kind of um, getting through the passaggio up to that top E. And then it laid on the shelf for a long time. And then my voice was evolving and I was kind of, um, finding, uh, discovering it was, let me do some things that I, that it wasn't ready to do. And then it kind of came in time. It was great, you know, and I, I kind of found how to, how to navigate it. I don't know if it's there right now. I haven't, I haven't tried it, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but, um, but, you know, just being aware that the, that the voice does evolve and does change. And, um, and, and coming back to the Vespers, when we, uh, the rock line off, when we did it in 19, 88, 89 with Shaw. There's there was a couple of movements um, where it just hung the bass um, um, part um, hangs around a middle C B flat right there and and, and um, I it was just above it was like and I, I, I my voice wasn't ready to do it I couldn't do it now yeah now it's no big deal I and I you know it, 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 a combination of the vocal maturity and the stamina required um, to do it. And uh, when we did it with Clarion in New York uh, in May at Carnegie, you know, it was easy. It was, there. I wasn't quite, the whole work wasn't quite the running a, 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 a triathlon, you know, right, those, yeah. those, those, those um, you know, you, uh, that it was always, 
for a long time, it was like you get to the, the last three movements of that work. Um, there's two super huge movements, and then there's three. The last three movements are really short. Okay. You get to those movements, and you're like, I would get to those movements, and I'm like, I've got nothing left. You know? <laughs> right. and, yeah. But now it's like, oh, okay, yeah, we got this. You know, it, it's um, now I'm sure that'll change, you know, as I get on in years. You know, I'm not going to be doing this for another 10 probably. But, you know, because, you know, I'm officially retired, you know, I just retired this <laughs> August, you know, and, yeah. um, and, um, but, and, and, and I, you know, so we'll, we'll see. Yeah. I'm definitely. Tired my church work. I'm not retired from singing. So, yeah. yeah. That's, that continues forward, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. People, everybody <laughs> says, oh, you're going to be doing this well into your 70s. And, you know, there you go. And, um, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever, you know. They don't fall asleep, you know, <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, and, you know, but taking good care of myself in terms of, um, diet. And mm -hmm. I'm not a big exercise guy. I never have been. Um, but I'll, you know, I, I, but I, you know, I walk and I climb stairs and do all that type of thing, you know, and my, yeah. I, have a place to go. I just had to go to the post office this afternoon. So I just got the bike out and rode, rode you know, pedaled to the bus the post office which is fine you know I'd rather do that yeah absolutely kind of like the idea of living a bit off the grid it's kind of nice too you know oh i can yeah i can only imagine oh my god i'm so technologically you know <laughs> you're a different, different generation so you can you know you can handle this i'm like when you know I, I, but I, you know i am a dinosaur <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine hey you're still pretty good in comparison to some people in, um, from your generation uh yeah well I, you know, I was just visiting my nephew and his wife and my niece and, you know, okay, they're 30, you know, <laughs> and they're like, just trying to run the television. You know what? How do you get this thing to work? You know, and you got to, oh my gosh, it was so much easier when, <laughs> when I was young. So and I, you know, that's that. So, but. yeah, for sure. Oh, okay, so let's see. What's the next one? Uh, what does your warm-up routine look like on any given day? Or what did it look like? On it, well, it, it's... Um, um, it, I do a lot of um, sustaining on a single note. And then I'll do a lot of sliding around. Oh, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. to kind of get the channel going and then i'll kind of work into you know some you know definite notes um different vowels um but also running it from the very low to the very top and back down again oh, you know there's kind of this just this um like uh, the sirens yeah the siren thing you know and um you know it's it's pretty bad right now that um and i'm kind of not, but i have to kind of it, it's kind of like taking a car out on the interstate and blowing out the engine <laughs> yeah you know you gotta let the, let it, you gotta let it run and um and i will say the older i get the harder it is in a well it depends on the, 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 the sound that the choir conductor is going for in terms of a choir mm -hmm. but you know it it's it, it's hard it, it's it's more difficult if i you know when you're not given a chance to just kind of let it go yeah uh, you know, all due respect. And, um, but, and, but, okay, that's fine. There's plenty of people that can do that, <laughs> you know, and, um, but, but just basically just kind of, kind of finding that channel and just kind of you know, doing, doing the siren thing and, and the sigh thing and, and, um, uh, yeah, and different vowels. Um, Good to know. And folks, for those that don't know that do sing, Warming up is pretty much required. Yeah. Well, I, I don't warm up a lot. <laughs> I will say that when, you know, I just kind of blow out the engine and, and off we go, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, and I, I, I not to, not to um, d d diminish it. It's, it's different for, different for everybody. Yeah. And, um, and, um, it feels good. And I'm, I, you know, I can tell when I need to kind of be more guarded or, you know, do a little bit more or do a little bit less. <laughs> And, um, you know, when it's in the groove, yeah, uh, but, it, but it's different. It's evolved over the years, you know, as I, as I've matured and as, um, I've, 
discovered things about my voice and um and how it's different it's certainly different from what it was 10 years ago you know i listened to things i recorded you know and i'm like oh i would do it a little differently now but that's an interpretive thing um yeah and um but uh, yeah so but we all absolutely need things evolve so as or when it comes to um some of your record high and record low um notes that you've ever sang uh-huh. um Starting with your high, what's your record high that you've ever sang that you know of? Performing um, was it was, was a toppy, um, toppy middle e, middle above middle C, yeah, above middle C. So that would be the that would be an E three, right? Something like that, I guess. I don't know, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I can yeah E three mm-hmm. yeah E four E four E four. I was gonna say E three didn't sound right. E four E four. Um, the lowest is that. Uh, Low F would that be F one? What is it? Yes, a low F would be. Let's see. Um, F one. Four, three, two, one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, see what, the way I was doing it is a little different, folks. He's doing it real, like he, it's his, his raw voice. I'm having yeah, well, to do you're something. Else. It. You're frying it. <laughs> yeah, I was frying. Uh, uh, that uh, one uh, was fried. I can fry, and I can also do something called inhale bass. And oh yeah, I can right. Also do that. I'm doing it. <laughs> but yes, his is that is that is real chest voice, folks. For those that don't know, right? Yeah, uh, you know, I think those notes aren't really very that pretty. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, you have to question their usability too. Well, exactly. You know, and um, uh, you know the. Yeah, it has to be, you know, the usability and the music, the musicality of it, you know. Right. And um, the, um, you know, it's in a, in a, um, in a big choral situation, I think of um, some of the, the orthodox things that we, that I've done, um, and where we'll add that extra note, you know, jump the octave at the end, you know. Mm-hmm. And in, within context, it can it sound you know it's okay it it comes okay it's okay yeah yeah depends on the color as a solo note you know it, it's 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 different yeah yeah and it's a bit like um I I don't want to say it's a it's a bit uh, it's 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 you know it kind of like it kind of calls attention to itself. Right, yeah. You know, I um, had to laugh when Benedict wrote that song of Simeon for me, you know, and it had had that low F in it. I just kind of like, yeah, right. <laughs> and I did it, you know, I can do it. and uh, But it is stripping the barrel. But when, um, but, you know, when he published it, when Oxford University Press published the work, you know, he had to provide another version, a transposed version that people can do, you know, how many right. people in the world can actually do it? Well, I can't think of very many people, you know, yeah. and they got to sell the piece and, you know, and um, it, it, for it to be heard, that's okay. You know, it's, that's fine. Yeah. And it doesn't lose it, you know, um, you know, it's kind of a magic moment. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. And yay. So definitely. Let's see. So, um, so, um, can you give us a, or can you quickly share with us some of your favorite moments in singing when you've been singing with other people? Yes, I will. Yes. Um, the, I can give you a few, um, of course, you know, some of the moments from, choir college when we're being formed you know i'm a freshman choir you know that conductor was so amazing um it just he was just this big well he was he just took us in his gesture and molded us and brought us together you know i can you know there was a and just seeing his face when we would do things like you know there was this like the Lutkin benediction or the or when I survey the wondrous cross or any of those things. I was like, you know, he just, oh my gosh, just took us there. Uh, yeah. But also I, and um, um, think of, um, oh, where was I just going? I just lost it for a second. Um, oh, Mr. Shaw. When we were in France, 
and doing the Vespers. And we, um, um, we were, uh, it was our, we did three different sets of repertoire that summer. Um, there was about 70 in the chorus. Yeah, probably. And, um, first was, a, 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 the first set was, um, early music, um, which, a 70 voice choir uh, i don't think so but um but but okay whatever the second set was the vespers and the third set was the, the works by poulenc mm-hmm. and we had just done these two concerts of the vespers which were just amazing just the audience was just totally transfixed they didn't move a muscle and um and then we were started the, the last program and we, and we we recorded them those yeah. two programs but um we um we got we were to sing for the recording people um uh, in a in a test session um the rehearsal that morning didn't go well uh, on the pool line mm. stuff you know and it was like it was really bad and he he could be a bit of a pistol mm-hmm. you know we hadn't seen that side of him and he just kind of went off you know and and we're like, yeah. what is this? And he got ready to throw us out and, you know, but we were supposed <laughs> to go back. No, really, he stormed out of the room. It was not pretty. Um, wow. it, was, it was rough. And, uh, but we got word, you know, to be at the Abbey in, in, where we were in, in Suyak, France, the, the Abbey there at three. And we're going to sing for the Telarc folks, you know, the, the recording people. Okay. Yeah. And we were doing um, movement six of the Vespers, which is the Bogoroditsa. And was the Ave Maria, and um, and I'll never forget. He, we were all like, you know, stunned by what we experienced, you know, that morning, you know. Mm-hmm. And then a woman in the choir who sang with him in the when the in the chorale days, seasoned singer, you know, she's big in New York and everything. And and we we got sent to her. We, um, what was that about? And she said, well, you know that was nothing compared to what it used to be like you know but then <laughs> but she said what well, he's going to conduct and he's going to conduct like you've never experienced him a conductor before <laughs> and it's going to be so mind-blowing and incredible and so we did we started we started singing this thing and he just was like conducting it kind of kept it all right here didn't really look at us and there's a spot where the in that, that, that kind of, at the climax of the piece where the bass go da 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 and it was like heaven opened up. <laughs> it, he just, it was like, like literally a light was shining down on heaven from heaven on him and he glowed like it was the transfiguration. And it wasn't about because it was him. He just took it to this place. And then we got to the final cadence and he just conducted it and just did it like we, he had never done it before. And just, it was magical. It just, and, it, and it, they captured that on the recording, you know, and, and they come on with the microphone and they said, oh yeah, we're good. We're, we'll record, you know? Yeah. But just taking us to those places. And, you know, other mo- moments with Shaw, um, you know, when we would sing in, in, in Carnegie um, in January, um, some of those big choral orchestral things that, you know, like a, like a Mises Solemnis or a Berlioz Requiem and just, and also the little, little stuff, you know, that, that, that you know, they'll, forever be etched in my brain yeah and um but also um you know things with conspirare but also um the clarion in new york um stephen fox when we did um the um steinberg um um passion week in in saint petersburg and moscow and it had never been performed there um that was unbelievable um it was a piece um i don't know if i give you a little background on steinberg um, he was um he was the guy that married rimsky korsakov's daughter and um and and um and um he s- succeeded rimsky korsakov at the the moscow conservatory he stayed um f- through the revolution he converted to orthodoxy um wrote this piece um, pass it on to his student Shostakovich, who passed it on to uh, this conductor who came to New York and was the associate conductor of the New York Phil. And yeah. his daughter was our manager for Clarion, and um, and and it had never been performed because it's hard. It's but it's an amazing piece, and so we did the New York premiere and recorded it, and uh, like a 
something popped up on my screen. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, it was like a software update. <laughs> No, um, I got you. Not, please no. And <laughs> um, so um, we, the U.S., the, the person with the U.S. State Department um, came to our concert and noted that it had never been done in New York. And did I freeze? So the State Department said, well, we'd like to support this to take it for you to go to Russia to do the premiere. Yeah. And which is what we did. And just the ovation of the audiences there. Oh my gosh. It was incredible. Just, you know, they, they do that rhythmic clap thing, you know, and it goes on forever. You yeah. Know? And um, that, I'll never forget that. Um, and um, just some, you know, singing for John Scott at St. Paul's in London Cathedral. You know, stuff like that. Just pretty, pretty, pretty amazing stuff. Huge moments. Uh, huge moments, you know. And um, yeah, so it's been, it's been, an, and um, oh, and, and, and doing, um, you know, Joby Talbot's Path of Miracles in Spain. That's another one for which it was written, you know, that's pretty, yeah, I've been, for, I've been very fortunate, very, very fortunate, you know. And I would say, I, I would, I would has, hazard a guess to say, f for those that are in choir specifically, a standing ovation is one of the biggest thing, one of the biggest accomplishments ever. Yeah. You know. like, but it's more of like a, but it's not necessarily like an accomplishment in the same normal context as the word. It's just, man, I just got a standing ovation. That's yeah. incredible. It's and, more. It's it's more like to. It's more of like a thing that just kind of baffles you. Not necessarily an accomplishment. And um, you know, when I do like the Chesnikov piece, you know, and various, I've done it, you know, all, you know, all over, and and um, I don't know the, the response I get. You know, I know it's a, my voice is unique and all that, and right. It's humbling, you know, but um, and I'm not one. I'm. Uh, uh, I, I never really liked being on the front of the stage. Just don't like it. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I was doing those big symphonic things, you know, and I know the little, the few that I did, I, you know, people say, why didn't you go into opera? Why did you do this? And I uh, no, no, no. just, that's my introvert side. Yeah. Plus yeah. you like fitting in with the choir anyway, right? Yeah. 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 So there we are. Let's see. Okay, so um, moving on to a tips and tricks question, and then we'll have a, a bit of a breather. So do you have any tips, tricks, or life hacks for anyone that sings or wants to sing? Um, yes. Don't push it too quick. Let your voice um, season with time. Um, never louder than beautiful. Um, I like that. Never louder than beautiful. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, those are the big ones and do your homework. Do your homework. <laughs> do your homework. Know what the piece is about and not just what the notes are on the page, but what, how, um, Know something about the soil from which it comes. You know, if you're going to sing a Bach B minor mass, you better know something about Bach and the world that he lived in and what he was about. So that way you can give it the best possible performance. Well, yeah. And also, not just musically, but um, also philosophically, theologically, whatever. You know, yeah. regardless of where you are, um, you need to understand the soil from which all this stuff flows from, you know. And um, it wasn't until I started singing Orthodox liturgies uh, with St. Tecons in Northeast Pennsylvania that I started to really uh, understand how that, what, where that piece comes from, um, what the soil is, um, how, why the sequence of text is what it, what it is, um, and um, just... You know, to get you, 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 you might not be of the tradition or born in the tradition, but you need to kind of 
understand. You need to kind of drink like a basic water. understanding, right? You need to drink the water, you know, right. to, to a degree, you know, or the English English church music. I love English church music. I'm just kind of a frustrated Anglophile, you know. I I kind of wish I was a choir boy in England growing up. That was I I would have just loved that. I'm grateful to the you know to John Scott for the opportunities I had in England you know, singing at St. Paul's and stuff like that. And I, I love that repertoire. I love the liturgy. Um, just, and, um, but to understand um, the soil to, to you know, uh, and it drives me a little crazy when, when pieces like that are just done in a pure, purely concert context. Mm -hmm. you know, it drives me, it crazes me when I hear like a, a, a bird mass done as a concert piece, William Bird Mass. Mm -hmm. you know that's it they're 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 liturgical pieces and then they, they unfold some dramatic action that's taking place it's all you know it's all contributing to the to a whole you know and um so and and again at the end of the august everybody claps you know well it's not a piece you clap for <laughs> <laughs> you know it's not intended to be that you know and, right and, you know so yeah so that's fine. Those, are, those are my those are my big things but um yeah, do your make homework. Sure you, make sure you do your homework and understand never, the the soil. Right, never louder than beautiful, never and louder than beautiful. it's not. And it's not about you. And it's not about you. It's not about you. Keep those in mind as you're doing your music, folks. Yes, right. You know, we're very much performance oriented in this in our culture. You know, we're very um, um, consumed with. Um, the me factor in a lot of ways, you know, I'm not one for a lot of carrying on, I, you know, this, mm -hmm. you know, that's part of my solitude, I guess. But I think that's, uh, I'm not big into gimmicks. Oh, I think it froze up a little bit again. I'm not a gimmicky person. No, no, let, let, let it stand on its own, you know. But we're all kind of, you know, to kind of get, it kind of goes with the kind of the state of the culture these days, uh, how we've evolved, you know, the instantaneous gratification and um, just, um, you know, you just have to have it totally engaging. You know, you just can't sit and be, we, don't, we have a problem. We have a problem with, it's difficult for people to be in silence. Yeah, absolutely. I understand yeah. that. You know. Believe me. I see it every day. <laughs> yeah. You know. Absolutely. So, so there's that. So good. So, yes. Uh, the next one. Okay, so that brings us to a quick little breather, at least on questions from me. So now what this section is, is it gives you an opportunity to um, kind of briefly speak on anything you've got going on in your life. Advertise if you have anything to advertise. Oh, okay. Let me think. Um, well, I've got these... A few gigs coming up, but a, a particular note, well, there's a few things. Um, one is this um, documentary on choral music in America, which is coming out. Um, I think ACDA, American Choral Directors Association, is involved in Choral and Chorus America. And um, there's some really wonderful interviews and insights in, 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 with various people about all of that. And um, um uh, from all different avenues, the sacred and the secular. Um, and I speak a little bit about um, my journey and my Shaw experience and how, you know, things un unfold in our lives when we least expect it. Um, I'm doing uh, um, um, the, 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 the South African equivalent of, Ameri of uh, American Coral Dress Association and, of course, America. They're having a convention in um, beginning of March, and they're doing the Rock Vespers, and they're bringing me in to kind of be the, you know, one of the, the guy, people that they're bringing in to, like, you know. Yeah. Significant. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, and um, I've... Um, I'm trying to think here. Um, just hold on, let me think. Um, oh, there is um, um, the, um, uh, the in the in the in I think it which which I think it might be September October 
edition of the Coral Journal, which is the ACDA publication. They're doing it. This year was the hundred um, and a hundred. And, it was an anniversary for Rachmaninoff, and I forget what it is. Um, but there's a big feature article on the Vespers, and they interview um, Vlad Morrison. Um, Vlad, no, Vlad Morrison wrote the article, who's the Musica Rusica guy. And he interviews a series of questions for, there's three conductors and there's three singers, and I'm one of the singers. And uh, yeah. that was pretty, pretty cool. I'm ex- I, 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 it's, 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 it's really good. It's not just a historical overview or an, 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 an analytical piece about the work, um, but just um, speaking with conductors and singers about their experiences and their insights and with specific questions. So that was that was that's pr- pretty cool about that. And, yeah, for sure. Anything kind of else feel- exciting coming up? Um, that's kind of it. Um, we got Clarion coming up in the first the beginning of the uh, right for Christmas, a new work, which I haven't seen yet. Steven's excited about it. Um, but it's, uh, um, and then, um, in April, I've got some little things scattered around, um, um, uh, rock vespers here and uh, some other stuff, but, um, in April, um, I think it's April, um, um, Benedict Sheehan composed has composed a piece, uh, a Ukrainian requiem, which is going to be premiered and I can believe recorded up in Edmonton, Alberta. Um, so I'm going to be part of that. Have That's a, cool. Yeah, but it's it's been, yeah, there's a big Ukrainian community there. I find out so so that that's kind of it. Um, you know, gotcha, gotcha. Kind of taking it easy. I you know. Um, yeah, I, I, I've, 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 I've done a lot and I, you know, I don't want to do everything anymore. You know, I, did. <laughs> I understand. And, um, I understand. And, um, and, you know, there's a, um, you know, younger generation coming along and you know, young, you know, but even so like the, the singers I've been singing with for a while that are in their forties, you know, they're all kind of like, Oh my gosh, I'm getting older. And I'm like, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. Let me tell you, you know, it's kind of funny. My voice Boy, is you... changing, you know. You know what's yeah. different? Now I've got two kids, and uh, I was like, like "Boy, if I got a surprise for you." That's right. You know, I'll tell you. You know, wait, wait. You know, when do you get my age? <laughs> That's such a relative phrase. Oh, I know. I'm old enough to be your dad. <laughs> I don't quite say that, but I just, I just put it here. You know, yeah, for fine, sure. You know. But also, you know, every but you know, you, there's there's chapters of people's lives which are kind of consistent. You know, when you're in your 20s and your 30s, 20s you're just kind of figuring out. Your 30s you're really gunning it. 40s you're like in the zone, and 50s kind of too. And then you're like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? And, and, <laughs> and but also, you know, um, in your 20s you're living out of a suitcase. If you're like, oftentimes I'm a singer. You know, I remember there's one soprano I sang with. Um, and uh, super high soprano and she was just doing the gig thing she was um she literally had a suitcase and then just lived out of a suitcase and had a post office box you know <laughs> and then you know that you do that for a, a, a bunch of years and that gets old oh i bet that gets old and you just kind of want to start to settle and yeah. now she's got a university job and she's bought a house and I just sang with her this summer and she's all, you know, is in a different chapter, which is great, you know. And then those that are married, you know, start having their kids and, you know, a, a wonderful singer friend of mine here. Um, she was doing the opera thing. She was in the church I was at and, um, you know, did Salzburg and, you know, young artist programs and on and on and on. And um, but then she was like, you know, I, you know, I just want to nest. Yeah. You know, and, and that's fine, you know. And um, so. I mean, there comes a point in life, too, where you just feel like you want to just settle down anyway and just kind of yeah. slow down. Yeah. And just kind of live it, you know, and that's, mm-hmm. that's great, you know, and that's, that's part of it. You know, it's good. So. Absolutely. But I, I kind of laugh. I, you know, I was like, here I am, you know, I just retired. Yeah. <laughs> from a church job you know and um 
uh, yeah, and I, you know, I, I can't imagine doing that pace anymore. You know, that was, you know, ooh. that was a neat thing about being out in Portland. You know, all, all I had to do was play notes. Yeah, definitely. I didn't have to do budgets. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to hire or fire people. <laughs> yeah, it's easier. Yeah, uh, tell me about it or listen to the drama. You know, and all that. Hundred percent. You know, been there, done that. Forty nine Christmases I've done. So as a true musician, so <laughs> you know, so there we are. Yeah, there we are. All right, so I've got uh, one more question, or well, I will have one more question for you that I will give to you as we're wrapping this up. But then after after that little section that we do, where we give our guests an opportunity to kind of share what they've got going on. There's also a little bit of a brief section. I give my guests where they can ask me any questions that they have for me. Should they have any? So you have the floor oh, for sure. that. If you have any. Yeah. Are we at that point? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know who you were until you appeared. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so what do you do? And tell me about this podcast and, and, um, you know, and, Okay. So I'll try to give you like a bit of an elevator pitch. So yeah. I didn't really come on to like the music scene until November of last year when I kind of got a wild hair and decided to do something interesting. Mm -hmm. So I work from home currently. Um, I work for a place close to where I live and I, I've been playing instruments all my life, singing all my life, but I never really did anything with it. And I feel like that's, the world's worst thing if you have a gift and you don't use it mm -hmm. and it's it's like my father said when i was growing up i i would i'd pick up a guitar and i'd just start playing it mm -hmm. and then i would put it down a few minutes later and he's like what'd you do that for you've got the ear for it why don't you just keep playing just keep playing <laughs> just keep playing and mm -hmm. that didn't really resonate with me until i started or like in, until right before i started this youtube channel uh -huh. I, I i thought to myself like I have a voice. I can play music on several different instruments. What am I doing with my life, right? And I've realized also that I'm a really good, like I'm a seasoned people person. I like to talk to people. I'm mm -hmm. highly extroverted. Mm -hmm. So I thought to myself, why not create an avenue for not only myself to get to know people in the music industry for but for people to get to know their audiences to get to know them. Mm -hmm. So that way I can interview them, learn more about them myself, but create a way for their audiences to learn more about them also. Mm -hmm. And also a way for their audiences to really understand and appreciate their music on a new level by knowing more about that person. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, light bulb moment. This is, this is where I'm meant to be. I started working on YouTube that day. I got all my picture. I got pictures done. I got my, got video camera set up, computer set up, and I just started filming. Mm, I uh, started making like reaction videos, so reacting to um, viewer submitted songs and kind of giving basic insight as to what's happening in the music, and you know, basically just drawing detail to the nuances, like. Mm -hmm crescendos decrescendos mm -hmm. um staccatos how punctual notes are how much talent it takes to do stuff like that you know mm -hmm. and i, I kind of did that to get like a basis to start but that's kind of where i'm at as far as like the podcast is concerned is that i really just have this love for music and i want to spread it like a bad infection oh okay and in order to do that i feel like my best way of doing that is just sitting here like I'm talking to you right now, just shooting the crap and talking about music and mm -hmm. learning about learning about my guest stories. And mm -hmm. it's just, it's beneficial for everyone, I think. Nice. And that's where I'm at with the podcast. It's doing amazingly. I love all of my subscribers. I'm, I'm approaching 3000 subscribers right now. What? Thank, thank you guys so much. 3000 wow. subscribers. 3000. Wow. Just since less, last year. Just since November of last year. You guys wow. are amazing. Love you wow, guys so much. Amazing. It's a whole world that I don't understand. I, I, <laughs> 3,000 people have clicked a button that says, I want to be notified the next time you do another podcast. Very and cool. And I'm like, Very cool. that blows my mind. And yeah. 
I can't wait to see where the channel goes. We're okay. only going up from here. And the bigger the channel gets, the the more people I can get on and put back into my audience. Very cool. Very cool. How'd you That's, find out about me? I I've I jumped into this bass singing rabbit hole. Uh huh. And I always was addicted to bass singing in particular. I I didn't really realize that I'm not a true bass, and it took me a while to come to terms with that because I was like, well, I've got a low voice, but people, yeah, right, right. you know. But at the end of the <laughs> at the end of the day, I'm 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 not a true bass. I I'm a bass baritone, and but yeah. I would sing. I can sing bass parts, but I'm like, I want to get better at this. I want to learn more about this. Mm-hmm. Is there like a community for bass singing? Oh, well, just behold, there has. Oh there yeah, is, there is. There's a, whole, <laughs> there's a whole rabbit hole. Oh, did you think? <laughs> there's a huge rabbit hole. Yep. And mm-hmm. when I got to learning about some of the biggest names in bass singing history, all throughout history, people that have, that are, have gone before us and are currently here with us, mm-hmm. your name came across um, several different chat windows and across it. Um, it came across a lot, and I'm like. I want to meet this guy and, and I want to learn what air I want to learn his story because you hmm. clearly got one of the most resonant bass voices in history. Yeah. Well, people say that I'd like to be kind of, you know, I kind of have this fantasy of like having an out of body experience <laughs> and just kind of hearing it yourself to hear what I get to hear myself, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, cause like, Oh, why is everybody so excited? You know, why are they, <laughs> they that? you know, the room kind of shook, you know? Well, Absolutely. But, but yeah, um, as far as finding you, it's just I've had several people that have like they they've taken notice of what I'm doing with YouTube, and they notice that I'm I'm finding ways to get a hold of people in the music industry and bring knowledge and from them and bringing their stories to pe- other people on the internet. People oh. have found out about that, and they're like, "Hey, why don't you talk to X Y Z?" And I'm like that's a great idea. I've already wanted to talk to him about stuff like that. So let me try reaching out. And, and that's kind of where we're at at this point. That's well, wow. 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 It was like, you know, it's, it's never know. at least from this end, you know, like people kind of come out of the woodwork or, or you know, these little things that happen like you and then Peter mm-hmm. and then uh, during the pandemic, um, Alex Mayang, you know, that the talk box with Octavus thing. Did you catch yeah. You know, that I was, haven't got to see all of that yet. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, uh, yeah, God, and, and yeah, he's like, you know, he, he's not shy. You know, yeah. it's great, you know, but it's just kind of it's. It, let's just let's say it's youthful. Mm-hmm. And you it's t- to me, I'm just I have this burning desire to spread the love for music and yeah. helping people understand the the artists that create the music that they like to listen to. I just love doing that and. Yeah. And that's the They're, thread with all these, all of you guys. It's great, you know. And, absolutely. You know, and I just am I'm kind of amazed. I, you know, can't everybody sing a low, low A, you know? <laughs> why are they coming to me, you know? <laughs> you know and why do they want to interview me I, I, you know, um, and all that type of thing? So I, it's a kind of a, an honor and a, you know, uh, not just an honor, but it's like it's humbling, you know, because you realize that what you're doing is does really does kind of have an effect. Oh, absolutely. 100%. You know? And um, and um, uh, it's it's a wonderful feeling. And I will say, too, and then we can move on to your next question. Um, it is truly a humbling feeling to know that other people are getting something from what you do in music. You know, we would just try to do what we do. You know, I had, you know, 1989, I had no idea. I, I just sang the notes. Yeah. I just sang the notes. And then I just keep singing the notes. And then this happens. And then this happens. And then, you know, I got to, I got asked to write a, a, a chapter for a book. I haven't mentioned that. There's a yeah. book that came out about, I don't know, male choral singing and a, a, a uh, uh, he was a classmate of mine. He's the choral guy at the University of Alabama, Alabama yeah. or Mississippi. Old Miss. He's at Old Miss. Old yeah. Miss. Okay. Yeah. Don Trot is his name. Great guy. Great, great guy. And um, he did this different people um, to write various 
chapters about different things. And he had me write a chapter about being an octavist and that whole, that whole world. And I was like, Oh, really? You know? And yeah, uh, but still, you know, you kind of not aware of, well, when you're just doing it and um, you don't think about the, how far that the, the wave is going to go out in the pond that you're singing in, you know, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, uh, definitely. So. Got any other ones for me? Um, no, not really. That was kind of the big one, you know, because you just kind of you just kind of came out of thin air, <laughs> as, as everybody does, you know. <laughs> you know, it's, and it's really kind of wonderful. And uh, but it's just great that you know there's such a, you know, um, people really are you know really have a love and zeal and want to spread it, and and it's what binds us together. And you know, I'm just I've been all. You know, I just, you know, do not, do not reject me in my old age. I kind of keep thinking back to, you know, and I guess, <laughs> yeah. not, you know, and, um, that's not, that's not happening, but, um, but just yeah. about an awareness that, um, you know, I, I guess because I'm getting on, you know, I don't, you know, I, and, and I just like, um, just how things kind of enter your life when they do. Yeah. Well, the timing it tends to work pretty well anyway. Yeah, and, um, so we're grateful. So, absolutely. There right, we are. I got one more question for you on the send off, and then we will wrap this up. Okay. So, I'm going to start finishing off with a spicy question that I would like to leave everyone with. And that is if you could steal a fellow singer's voice, who would it be and why? Janet Baker. Janet Baker. Soprano. She's she's 90 some now. She is the most I just love her voice. I love her artistry. Um her she's a mezzo soprano. Okay. I just love the way she sings. It's kind of like my love of a cello or an oboe. Not that she's yeah. a cello. Oboe. It I just and it's her commitment, her genuineness. Um, her just honesty, you know, she's not, it, she's not a, she's not a diva. Um, yeah, I, 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 you know, if I had to be another voice part, I want to be a mezzo. But you'd be a mezzo if you could. That's yeah. pretty awesome. I want, you know, I just want to sing Bach arias, you know, and then the then the Agnus Day from the B minor mass. That's just the way she sings it. Oh my gosh, or the. Arius from the St. Matthew Passion or the Elgar Dream of Beautiful Dr- doesn't even describe it, right? Oh my gosh. I just, you know, I can listen to her for days. You yeah. Know? And, um, but she's not a diva. She's just. Doesn't fit the bill, right? No. And I'll do respect to divas. The, the world needs all, the world needs every color that's in the crayon box. Let's put it that way. That's but a good way to put some it. Are, some are just, you know. Uh, but, you know, we all, some like sushi, some like pot roast. Right. You know. And that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. And that's, that's, that's great. You know. Yep. That, that's, that she's, she's the one. Yeah. I just love her voice. I got all her recordings and, um, and, um, yeah. Awesome. Guys, this has been an episode of the pod, of the vocast. We are coming up on an hour and 40 at this point, and we Whoa. are wrapping up. I know, right? It's kind of exhausting, but we made it through. Folks. We made it through, and it's. I thank you so much. You know, it's. It's, wow. been a, it's, it's been a true pleasure speaking with one of the legends of the bass singing community. Well, you know, I don't know. What was it? Something, what, what popped up recently? Oh, no, it was Peter's thing. It was Peter's, Peter's interview. Yeah. That was that was a really good interview. I listened to it also. That was but fun. That was fun. Folks, this okay. has been the Vocast. Thank you so much for coming on to spend some time listening to us banter and talk about music. Glenn, it was a massive pleasure getting to talk to you, my friend. Guys, if you were enjoying the content, I would appreciate a like, drop a comment in the descript or in the comments below, even if it's just a smiley face, it helps with the algorithm. The algorithm pushes the videos back to you. So it helps out a lot. If you're enjoying the content that much, go ahead and drop me a subscription. Hit that bell. Make sure you're notified every time I drop another upload. 
And if you're feeling extra generous, there is a link to my Patreon in the description where you can support me as little as, as $1 a month if you choose to be that generous. Not required to enjoy my content by any means. Guys, we love you. Take care of yourselves. And we will see you in the next video. Bye.